Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to do a manual install of OpenStack. And this is gonna be a video in multiple parts that I'm gonna publish later on. And I will link to the playlist down below and also to the script I'm using today. And now that we have installed Cinder, we need the next component. And the next component is placement. And placement is one of those interesting ones. They were not mentioned in the documentation for some reason, but it is very important. So we'll, I will set up the placement database and the placement user and privileges, very similar to how we have done it before and talk a little bit about it. Um, so the placement service, I didn't have it running one time and I was trying to get one of my instances to run and it kept telling me there is no hardware to run this on or there is no nowhere to run this instance. And I thought that was a really interesting thing that there wasn't any place to run it because I had a compute unit that could run that placement or that instance. But the reason is that from Nova they have taken some part of Nova and breaking it out to a separate service called placement. And placement will gather all the different Stay, um, statistics about what is available in your system, displaying them in a nice GUI, but also making uh, choices on where to actually put your inform uh, put your instances. So if you have one virtual v um, CPU and a bunch of memory available somewhere, and you create an instance that requires some of that. Uh, those resources, it can say, okay, we'll put it over here. So it's an interesting service and it's something that you really need. So now I have set up the um, user, the, the database, the role for placement uh, as an admin in the service category. We have created the service placement and also created the uh, admin internal and uh, public uh, API endpoints. And then we will install the placement API. So that's the package we need to install. And it will ask if we want to set up the database. I skip that. We don't want to set up the token. I skip that too. And I don't want to register the endpoint catalog. So let's do it all manually here. Then we will go into the placement configuration file. We will search for the con uh, connection again for the database. So here we have the placement database and we will put in the connection string here. So it's connection equals MySQL, Py, uh, MySQL placement query IP address and the placement database. We want to check for auth strategy and it should be keystone under the API uh, here. So it can actually um, get a keystone token and in order to get the Keystone token, we need to look at the Keystone uh, auth token. Uh, keystone auth token um, part here. And again, we will remove and replace with our own version of this. So remove all the key documentation and so on. Um, of course, if you want to do this in production, you can keep all that documentation and then go through and see that you have the specific things set in there. But th this video will be a lot longer if I needed to go through and set them individually. So we will put the auth URL, the memcache server, auth type password, product domain and user domain to default, product name service, username placement and QWERTY as we have done before. And I will save that and then we will need to sync up the placement database. So this will give us all the information in the da database that is required to run placement. But there is a caveat here. I actually will go into the database here, go in and use the placement database and I will add an extra trait. So trait is just an ID and a name. 
and the ID is also um, incrementing. So I will just say this trait should be there. I will add the compute socket PCI NUMA affinity because when I ran this and I hadn't that trait, it didn't start my or didn't connect my compute server because it reported that I have this new my affinity and the placement server was saying no 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 and it pretty much crashed and couldn't really uh, it, it couldn't really connect that uh, compute unit so I will add it here so it can actually be connected I guess that this is something that will be added in later versions and it can just be an oversight here uh, and then I will restart and enable the placement service and restart Apache 2 as well for good measure. So now we have the placement API up and running and available in our system. Next up, we will install the controller package. So it's the, the Nova compute engine that is running these different instances has two parts. You have a controller unit that could start a bunch of instances and the instances is usually run in the compute part of this uh, Nova um, installation so you could either install everything on one machine of course but I am uh, decided to install the controller on one machine and then have a separate machine that I install the compute unit because that is usually what you do you have perhaps one or two controllers and then you have a bunch of compute units that you run your different software on. So to install the controller, we need some databases. So go into MySQL again and then install three different databases. We install Nova API database, the Nova database and Nova underscore cell one or cell zero uh, database. And we will create grant all privileges to all these databases for the user Nova and the password query. So that is a simple, simple setup there. We need to create a Nova user again and give that a password. So we'll give it the same password as everything else in this system. So not secure, don't, please don't do this. Uh, create a script where you have passwords for everything and different passwords for everything. We add the role admin to the service. We will create the Nova compu uh, OpenStack compute a compute service, and then we'll add the public internal and admin API endpoint for the compute unit. And after that, when everything is uh, in set up, we will install the software, and we need to install the Nova API. So that's what you're connecting to, and do different uh, tasks. The conductor will handle the instances, stop, start, and so on. Uh, the console proxy is so you can actually um, go into an instance and get an SSH session inside of, for instance, your browser. That is something I will set up. And the scheduler is handling yeah, where to run things and so on. Um, scheduling tasks. Uh, so we will not set up a database for this. We will set up the RabbitMQ as we have done before. Um, and we will input the username, the password. No, my IP again is this server's IP. The Cinder OS region is region one. We only have one region that we are running with and no endpoint is set up. And we'll not set up the database for the Nova API either. So all of these settings could have been set up in this uh, GUI, but I have had bad um, um, experiences with that. It hasn't worked that well, and I will do everything manually now. Uh, pretty much the uh, the part with the Rabbit MQ seems to work pretty satisfactorily, so I keep that in. But the other ones I will set up myself. You see here that the actual conductor didn't start. It got some error. And that is because we haven't con um, configured the database and so on. So the conductor can't really uh, connect to anything and so on. So there, there is a little bit of disconnect in the installation here. Uh, and the same goes for the scheduler. 
but the install will go just fine and we will restart the service later on anyway. So there the install was done, we'll go into Nova config, we will check for the transport URL as we had done before and see that we have the OpenStack um, set up here, so we have the right user for our RabbitMQ. We will check my IP again, just double check so it's correct. And then in the default section up here, just for this web GUI to get that to work, I will actually disable VNC and no VNC. Uh, that is something that they said is required for it to actually work. Um, I think that is very strange that you require to turn off VNC to get another service to work, but yeah, I follow the documentation there. Uh, the API database needs a connection string to the API database here. So we have Nova Curti and the API database. And then we go the, down to the database. Uh, section further down here we have one another database it's already connected to this SQLite database but I will change that uh, and connect my own Nova database instead so now we have that and then auth strategy is something that we need to look into and it's not enabled here, but you see also that it's deprecated because they have figured out for Nova at least and probably for this, the other services later on that Keystone will be the only one that is used for authentication. And then they have this no auth 2 that is designed for testing and so on, but they, didn't, they don't really have a third option. So why have this setting as all, at all? So they will remove that setting later on. Um, We'll go down to the VNC part here again. We will uh, look at it here and see that we actually disable VNC again. So we can set that to false. We'll look for spice. And in this segment, I will uh, remove the old configuration for spice and put in my own. Just for simplicity, uh, let's see here, I deleted a little bit too much, so upgrade levels started here, uh, so spice, put that in here, so enable equal to true, we set the HTML5 proxy host to this host, and uh, this port 6082 uh, and then I set a key map for Swedish keyboard haven't got then that to work yet so I have to use the American keyboard to log in or another strange keyboard because I don't think it's the American or the English design either because I know that pretty much so I, let's see if I can log in later on it might be a bit tricky uh, and then we get go to the keystone auth token that we have done before and again remove a bunch of this here so we can just put in our own for this video and let's see keystone all that information we have seen it before the auth url memcache server password as the type Domain name and for user and project default, product name, service, and the username and password. This is new service token roles required equal to true. So that is a flag that they say in the documentation needs to be set. So let's do that. Um, and then we go down to the glance part here. In glance, we want to set API services, but we see here again they are deprecated because they, this will be fetched from Keystone instead, so why have it? Uh, moreover, they want us to set a lock path for the Os Oslo concurrency, and I don't really see a reason to change that lock path. There is already a lock path set there, so why have another one? Uh, then we want to go into the Cinder part here, see if we can find that. Uh, here is the Cinder segment and we want to look for OS1 so OS 
read your name, it should be region uh, one. Uh, and then last but not least, I think it's last, yeah. We go to the placement segment. And again here, I will uh, remove and substitute with my own, the placement auth information. Um, and I think this is because they were one thing before and now they have just merged together to one, uh, to two th different services. Um, so perhaps this placement thing will be removed later on. Uh, so region, region one, uh, domain name, service, password, uh, default, all of this we have seen before and the placement. Save that configuration file. Now we need to sync up the API database first. So Nova manage API sync with the user Nova, run that through, should give us all the things that we need in our API database in order to control our instances. Then we need to set up the cell one database to run through that with the user Nova, migrate it up. And then in this thing, we can also create cell one with verbose. So the different services is running in different cells. And we see here that we get some warnings, but it does it and we get an UUID out. And then we will sync up the normal database for Nova. And it should uh, just go through and migrate it up to the latest version. And there is done. And last but not least, we'll list the different cells that is available in this API now. So we can see that we have set up this cell here with a RabbitMQ and MySQL endpoint. So it seems to work. Cell one is uh, set up. And then I want to restart and stop a bunch of services. So I restart Nova API, restart API metadata, restart the scheduler, conductor, and Spice HTML5 proxy. But I will turn off this no VNC proxy because we don't want that running uh, because they will not work well together, says the documentation. Um, so let it restart all of those and when all of those are restarted I will enable the ones that I restarted and disable the one that I stopped so they will be ready if we restart this server and um, so they will start at boot up so that was the Nova a controller part of this installation this was what I wanted to show for you today I hope that you found this interesting I hope that you learned something today if you have an OpenStack uh, implementation running already leave a comment in the comment section down below and especially if there is a specific service that you feel is more complicated and something that you can't really wrap your head around and you want me to dig deeper into that service then leave a comment about that in the comment section as well if you haven't subscribed yet please do that if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and I really hope to see you in the next video.